Uh, I would now request uh, Professor Thomas Magnati uh, to give his observations and his learnings uh, as to what uh, the Indian entrepreneurs, the school principals, and the India's engineering majors can learn from Singapore's story and how uh, his institution can uh, lend uh, that aiding hand uh, to all the participants out here. Professor Magnati. Uh, thank you and uh, good evening to everyone. Uh, first of all, uh, I must say that uh, I'm quite inspired by what I've heard this evening. I'm inspired by the outstanding work that my fellow educators have been doing in India. I'm inspired by the great work that uh, engineering firms and companies have been doing in India in a wide variety of ways. And I'm inspired by these uh, the last few speeches about nationalism. It's qu actually quite inspiring for me to hear all of this. And so, uh, thank you for that. Uh, I thought I thought I might just say a little bit about uh, we're all here tonight in some ways to celebrate engineering, uh, to celebrate education, and uh, I, uh, we think about uh, what engineer has, engineering has done for our lives. The National Academy of Engineering in the United States, uh, through a, pro a rather extensive process, identified the top 20 accomplishments uh, of engineering of the last century. So I want you to think back to the year 1900, and think back to the year 2000, and think about life in the year 1900 and life in the year 2000. And these uh, great engineering achievements were things like electrification, so electrification of our homes and our factories, water purification in terms of providing uh, purified water in terms, of, in terms of the last century all over the world, and we still have this crisis in many parts of the world, um, millions and millions of people every year died of waterborne diseases. Uh, engineering uh, led to healthcare technologies of a wide variety of ranges. It led to transportation in innovations in automobiles, airlines. It led to the electronics revolution as we know it today. It led to one thing after another. Our prosperity, economic prosperity, and our social prosperity depends upon engineering. It's depended upon it for, de uh, for centuries, and it will continue to depend upon it in the future. And uh, as educators, and as uh, individuals involved in the engineering enterprise, as represented in this room, we have an obligation. We have an obligation to look to the future and to provide uh, an education and provide uh, the human resources so that a uh, hundred years from now when people create that next list, it will be as powerful and it will be as important in terms of our prosperity. I'm often asked when I talk about this list, uh, Professor Magnanti, what's the list going to be what, the next hundred years from now? And my answer is, I'm not smart enough to know what that list should be. What I am smart enough to know is that engineers are going to play the same type of role in terms of affecting our economic and our social prosperity. Now, Singapore is, I think, uh, a nation that has uh, gained enormously from that. It's also gained enormously from its enormous investment in education and its enormous investment in uh, the research enterprise. Uh, I've been coming here rather regularly for 20 years. I'm a, by the way, I'm a long-term faculty member at MIT. You've heard that place, that small technical institution in Cambridge, Massachusetts. I was dean of engineering there for eight and a half years, but I'm the faculty for 43 years at MIT. Uh, and MIT has had uh, several programs here, coming back to about the mid-90s, 1990s. And it's been enormously impressive to see the advances that have been made in the educational and research sector here in Singapore. So when I first came in the 1990s, uh, the two large, uh, uh, highly rated universities in Singapore, the National University of Singapore and the Nantan Electoral University, uh, were both well-recognized universities, but basically teaching in national colleges. And over this 20-year period, they've risen almost daily, as you can see it, in terms of the rankings of the international enterprise. And they've done this for, uh, in a wide variety of ways. It's by uh, the process of innovation. It's by a process of uh, changing the way they educate and how they educate. And it's by a process of of uh, embracing research as part of the educational enterprise and bringing research to the classroom. Now just a word or two about this new university, the Singapore University of Technology and Design. Uh, it is being established in collaboration with MIT. Uh, 
uh, it's MIT's largest educational project in its 150-year history. So there's 100 MIT faculty working on this. And just as you're thinking about re-engineering uh, India in a wide variety of ways, we're using this opportunity to think about re-engineering technical education higher, uh, higher, uh, in higher education. And so in this new university, just a word or two, we have no traditional departments and no tra traditional schools or faculties, you know it. We have no traditional degrees. So typically you go to even my beloved MIT and you study mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, civil engineering, etc. And then you go off and you learn how to apply it into the world. And we just had this wonderful, inspiring talk about engaging the world in terms of what we do in terms of our, our children and our students. Uh, the world needs mechanical engineers and needs electrical engineers, but what the world fundamentally needs is products, services, and systems. It needs products, it needs services, it needs systems. So why don't we organize our educational uh, pro uh, programs around products, services, and systems around traditional disciplines? And we've done that in this university. So we organize around architecture and sustainable design, engineering product development, it could be products from nanotechnology up to jet airplanes, uh, mechanical products, electrical products, or molecular products, engineering systems and design. Many of the major problems that we face in the world are large, complex technical systems, environmental, energy, transportation, healthcare, etc., etc., etc. And then finally, information system technology and design, big data, pervasive information, etc., etc. So just as you in this room are uh, working actively day by day to in, uh, in make uh, investments and improvements in India through re-engineering, we in our small way are trying to make this change to higher education um, by anchoring in this new way of, of uh, organizing higher education and also a new way of teaching and it really echoes with this last uh, speech. Uh, we've now turned our back completely on large passive lectures, so typically or university 300 to 500 person large lectures, uh, educational psychologists, and engineering educators and educators who have told us it's a terrible way to learn. People do not learn well that way. So we instead of organize around cohort-based learning communities where 50 students at a time will be in a room that's easily configurable. Uh, they're typically working together on problems that are, are uh, application action-oriented in terms of what they're doing. Uh, there's really no other university in the world to our knowledge that does, it, it does this at this, this scale in terms of providing that. So we hope that, uh, that some of these innovations might make their way to India, or might make their way to the, the school system there, and the higher education system there. Uh, but I might just, first of all, I want to introduce one of my colleagues, Professor Aditya Mather, uh, who is, uh, uh, heads up our information system technology and uh, design pillar. Uh, he's uh, was a well-known educator from India. Uh, wrote the first sem uh, semiconductor book, or uh, semiprocessor, uh, uh, microprocessor book, first microprocessor book in India, and helped to establish the first computer science program in India many years ago. And now we're privileged to have him join us for this year. So I might just close by saying uh, I'm proud to be an engineer, and I'm proud to be an educator. I hope you're proud to be an engineer, proud to be an educator, and proud of your country. Thank you.